Songwriter from a Cameroonian from Bamenda. I'm about to get grilled by Camer Vibe. <laughs> Shout out to Camer Vibe for wanting to grill me, by the way. We're about to discuss some pretty interesting topics. And okay, there we go. My media goals. My media my media my media goal right now is to find my audience. Is to find my audience i don't know if this will make any sense to anybody but you know my music has been all over the place i know my music has been all over the place because i was like trying to find myself first of all as a person and then as an artist so my music until now has really never had an identity neither have i had an identity so what i'm trying to do right now like i think that's done so I want to find those people who relate to my music and to me as a person the way I am and to my music the way I put it out there. I want to find those people and make them feel good and have them inspire me and I inspire them as well. You know, I know there's those weird people out there. <laughs> uh, that's it. Butterflies, butterflies, butterflies. I was never inspired to change my look. My look never changed. My my look um, kind of grew up with me. I mean, I'm 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 definitely not the same person I was three years ago. And I've been growing up, and I've been learning new stuff, and I've been discovering new stuff. And my look kind of like came with that person. My look has always been me. What inspires my look? What inspires my my look? <laughs> That's French. Is <laughs> um, I like to be comfortable. Generally, I like I like I like to be comfortable. I just like to be comfortable. I really don't care where I'm going. I, I'm a tomboy, uh, and I like to keep it casual and laid back. And at the same time, I could really go overboard. I mean, that's it. It's it's not it's not even that serious. <laughs> It's not even that much of a big deal, trust me. I had big dreams of you, me, and I think we were when I said that's all we did. But you played for me, but then cheered for them. But it's okay, as long as you know that I need you so. The authenticity of art and artist. For every, for every uh, artist and for every song, there's an audience. No matter how it sounds, there's always people who will dance to it, there's people who will be happy listening to it. So I really cannot judge anybody's creativity. You know, being creative is 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 like is 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 not that easy. Um for any kind of music there's an audience and for whoever is listening it sounds authentic and it's the shit and it makes them happy. And so there's music for everybody. <laughs> Butterflies. Butterflies. Baby life. Okay, so right now we're going to talk about a really sad topic, racism. And I made a few notes so I don't leave out anything important because um, this is a really sensitive topic. Um, <clears throat> racism is the saddest thing that ever happened. Uh, <laughs> um, Right now we are talking about racism and I made a few notes so I don't leave out anything important and I hope you guys don't mind me glancing down now and then to check. Racism is, is the saddest thing that ever happened to humanity and I believe that is at the root, is at the base of, is the primary cause of all the sadness, all the negative energy, the wars, the killing and everything that's currently ruining our planet and that and it's it's even getting worse. It's it's crazy. It's simply human beings judging one another and treating one another differently simply based on 
wait for it, your skin color. Not because you did anything wrong, not because you hurt anybody, not because you not because you did anything wrong, simply because you happen to have a different skin color. Is that stupid? Is that trivial? And but that trivial little thing is the cause of all the terrible things we see on the news every day. And it's crazy. And you know what what's really sad and what we should acknowledge is that the black race, the black people, the dark skinned people are at the bottom of that ladder. We are the last. I'm talking, I'm from Africa, so I'm going to talk like somebody, I'm going to talk about my place, where I come from. We've been called all sorts of names. Monkey, animal, we've been eaten, we've been called ignorant, we've been called bush, we've been, our accent is made fun of. It's crazy. It's just... It's just like that and you know it's everywhere it's not it's not only in america or in europe or everywhere it's back home in africa as well i don't need to leave cameroon to feel discriminated I, you know even back in africa at home i'm supposed to feel safe and secure no as long as i'm standing next to a white person i'll be disrespected if i get into an altercation if the police shows up and there's a white person involved trust me everybody knows you all know they'll take the white person's side if i get to the club and there's no seats and the white person shows up you know i have to stand up for them to sit down they get the best jobs they get the best of everything even back at home and why is this i think that is simply because we were taught we were wired to depend on the white man we were taught we to 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 idolize them we were taught that they were superior you know when when you know when they came to africa to bring slaves and colonizers and everything they had to mind for us they had to teach us that they were superior to us we heard the story growing up of Zingraf who just left his glasses who put his glasses and went away to take a nap and the workers on the plantations or whatever believed that those glasses were were supervising them that's how stupid they thought we were and our forefathers passed on that bad doctrine to our parents and to our grandparents, our great grand and everything, and so on and so forth. And then the generation, and it is still there. The white, the myth of white superiority is still there. We depend on them. We read only their books. We use their machines. We've been taught that it's, that they, that they were the only people who could discover stuff like that, cool stuff. And so we are not even innovative. We don't even let ourselves think. And then you hear stuff like le blanc c'est le dieu, c'est un dieu, dieu a tout de nos blancs. Il n'y a que le blanc qui pouvait inventer ça. And when you hear stuff like that and see how excited our African sisters get when they when they, when they learn a white dude and the lens at which they're ready to go to, to you know to do stuff like that. I'm not judging anybody. I'm just trying to like show I just stop I observed, like just show how brainwashed we are. We we have we have been we've, 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 we already, we just know it's in our subconscious that they are superior to us. Well, I'm not, I'm not saying that we should fight them or teach ourselves or tell ourselves that we are superior to anybody else. No, I'm just saying we should be able to renew our minds enough to look at one human being and see one thing only, a reflection of ourselves. It don't matter where they come from, the race, skin color and everything because it gets worse. And right now, it's not even it's not even about the race or the skin color anymore. In Cameroon, amongst us, there's discrimination between light-skinned people and dark-skinned people. And the light-skinned people are still superior. And the darker you are, the lower you are. In India, it's the same thing. In parts of Brazil, it's the same thing. So, it's not, it's not a battle of races anymore. It's just about a doctrine, about a, some false teaching that some groups of people because not every white man is mean at the same time the white people who are full of love you know so it's about a bad doctrine that was like like tattooed into our brains and that has been carried has been passed on from generation to generation that the white that the light skin the white skin is more important we should respect them we thank we should thank them we owe them stuff and we owe them um i don't know so um, that's pretty much it so I think that what I think should be done is this. Since it's something that will stop, the only way to erase that bad doctrine is to is to replace it with a new one. 
we should actually um, introduce a subject in schools called self-love and start teaching children from preschool to university teach them how to love themselves how to be confident how to be content with who they are and looking at the fact that the black race is the most affected race that's where the focus should be go back to Africa go back to Cameroon go back to schools tell the little girl that your your, your stringy hair your you know this really hair this disturbing look this disturbing like this dirty looking hair is not dirty it's royal it's beautiful your dark skin is beautiful in its own way it's different it's beautiful not everybody gets to have this kind of you know you know not to say okay it's more beautiful than anybody no it's just to teach each and every uh individual to be content with who they are to be happy with who they are and to spread that love to everybody else and to just be happy with who they are. I think me I think that that's that's what it's about. Because until until you can look at a white man or a, an Asian and not see your superior but see a reflection of who you are, that's that's the only way peace could reign. That's the only way peace could reign. If not it will be conflict and fighting and and everything we really don't want more of. Being African is a one, it's an experience that's not given to everybody. Every Africans know it. Every <laughs> Africans know how cool it is to be African. So it's it's just being proud of where you come from. Americans are super proud of where you, of where they come from. They brandish their flags everywhere. Europeans the same. Why, why is it not the same with us? You know, that that that's what I think from what I observed around me growing up. You know, growing up it was in the air. Nobody had to even tell me. I just understood that the, uh, the white kid was superior to me. And we all know that. So we should really actively get together and do something about it. I may want to go and verify From got my house and make you testify but I'm needing just a little more Your love I need a little more There's no juice. <laughs> Juice, drugs, sex, alcohol, promiscuity, whatever. Those are you can you see them everywhere in every other domain of life, in every other industry, entertainment, politics, I don't know, um business, churches and schools, everywhere. You know, with entertainment it's a little bit more obvious why because everything happens on camera and everything is out there in everybody else's face, you know, and it's more exposed, you know, than the other sectors or but it's everywhere. It's, it's, it's just about like loving yourself, loving yourself enough not to hurt yourself like that. Knowing when to say yes, knowing when to say no. You know when to stop. You know when to, to chill, go easy. You know, it's simple. Love yourself enough, respect yourself enough not to disrespect yourself like that. It's because it's always going to be like that. It's always going to be like that. It's always going, it's, it's, it's always going to be there. It's, it's always going to be drugs and alcohol and promiscuity and everything. It's always going to be there. You know, it just it's just about the individual. <laughs> There's no juice. <laughs> There's no juice. <laughs> so give me juice. topic I made a few notes as well because it is really important as well if if growing up I knew this when I just started my career I I believe I'll be in a better place right now well I'm thankful for where I am right now but I'll be in a better place um, this is to anybody who wants to be successful who wants to be creative who wants to entertain first of all have a vision have a vision Know you, start by knowing yourself, understanding yourself. What I do is I ask myself questions. I talk to myself like I'm talking to somebody else. And I try to give myself the most honest answers. Have a vision. Know your vision by heart. And make detailed plans on how to get there. Daily objectives, weekly objectives, goals, and everything. Don't let yourself get distracted by anything. By anything. Find ways to remind yourself. Pin notes around. 
to anything, to everything, not to get distracted. Anybody who wants to get on board with you, you know how people will come every day and be like, oh my God, you were so talented. I think I want to be part of your journey or whatever. Make sure that person has understood your vision and has made it theirs before the business part wants to come in. It is your life you are talking about. It is your whole existence we are talking about. You don't want to get old and start regretting stuff. So make sure that person has understood your vision, understood where you're trying to get out with your life, and has made it theirs. And it's as important to them as, as, as it is important to you. If anybody claims they want to help you, and at the same time they want to change you, or change your vision, or change your route, that is how you plan on getting there. It simply means they don't know how to get you there. And as genuine as they may seem, as enthusiastic about your goals as they may seem, it's, it's safer to say no, thank you, and keep walking. Because trust me, you will do a lot better on your own than with somebody who doesn't get it. And it's only, it's only really hard to make it on your own. It's not impossible. Because first of all, before any other human being comes in, you have God, you have yourself. Trust me, that's more than enough. Don't let fear get the best of you. The fear of failing, the fear of getting laughed at, the fear of getting abused, of getting despised, the fear of nothing. Don't let fear get the best of you. Really, like I said before, if I, if I, if I, if it just my experience that just that that taught me this. I know talking to people and meeting people along the ride, along the, the 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 journey, I got inspired like this. But if I knew all of this before, I believe I'll be in a much better place right now. Don't let your fear, fear fear get the best of you. They are just human beings. If they laugh at you, it's fine. God will never laugh at you, and that's who should be most important to you. It's okay to make mistakes. It's fine to make mistakes. Mistakes are normal. That is why you are human. God knows we are human. He knows that we have weaknesses and we'll always make mistakes and we'll always slide and we'll always break down and everything. It's, it's normal. It's part of the journey. Make mistakes and just learn from them and keep walking and everything will definitely going to be alright. And of course, believe in yourself. Inspire yourself. Don't wait for anybody to inspire you. Inspire yourself. Let your goals inspire you. Let where you're trying to get at inspire you. Let let the people around you. Let, you know, those are secondary. But at first start by you inspiring yourself. God inspiring you, your goals, your dreams, and everything. And um, I'm sure um, <laughs> that's pretty much it. I just thought I should share this with anybody else who wants to make it as a creator, as a creative person in the entertainment industry. Uh, that's it. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm the smartest person alive. I'm just sharing stuff from my personal experience and observations. I hope it helps anybody out there. From my house and make you testify I'm needing just a little Okay, bar bleaching. What I'll say to my younger sister, my younger brother, whoever is, honey, be comfortable with who you are right now because there's a lot of people out there getting it worse, a lot worse. You know, but at the same time, choices is an individual choice. It's, it's, you know, every human being has the free will to do whatever they want. You know, God gave us the free will. He's not possessed anybody. You get to do decide what you want. You know. And I would just hope that it has nothing to do with the trend. You know, for example, a few years ago, skinny girls was trending. And that was all everybody wanted to be because that was the idea of beauty then. That the media, that the magazines painted to us. And right now, thick girls are trending. And everybody's trying to get thick. So what, what, what happens when pointy ears start to trend? Everybody starts getting an ear implants or whatever. I'm not judging anybody. What I'm saying is, it's okay to want to feel beautiful. It's okay to do whatever you can to feel beautiful, but as long as it's coming from inside, and as long as it has nothing to do with what's currently going on, people's idea of beauty and you know and all of that, 
And then again, I see people who, who, who turn up their skins, who, I don't know, who bleach, whatever, get a lot of um, backlash and criticisms and everything. And, they, and, and I hear people saying stuff like, you are not African enough, a true African woman will do that. Being African is in the heart, is inside. We have white African people, you see. So people go through a lot as it is to feel good about themselves and it's we really don't have the right to to make them feel to make anybody feel less than a human being because of I don't know the choice to, it's, it's not that serious yo it's not that serious it's just it's, I don't know it's not even that serious if you don't like it look the other way look you don't have to like everything if you don't like it look the other way and keep walking you don't have to say something mean and you know put them on blast and anything it's really not that serious um, that's what I have to say. I had big dreams of you, me, and I think we were when I said that's all we did. But you played for me, but then cheered for them. But it's okay, as long as you know that I need you so. What do you mean what's going on? <laughs> My sexuality is none of anybody's business. <laughs> Cambrians have bigger problems than what I'm doing or what I'm not doing. I mean, can I get to keep that at least? Can I get to, <laughs> do I get to keep that to myself? I know my life is out there, but come on. <laughs> Guys worry about bigger things, won't we? entertainment that's all I have to say you know my, to an extent my life is out there and I really cannot control what people will say or what they will not say neither can I start defending myself and <laughs> right now it's really on topics like that people will believe whatever they have to believe whoever started the story whoever is listening whoever is believing as long as it's getting you it's keeping you entertained the my, my pleasure but I know, I know myself, I know my values, and it's part of my job, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did I what? It's part of my job. It's part of my job. It's part of my job. It's part of my job to keep you guys entertained. I don't know. So if you pick out anything and you decide that that's what. That's what's up for you. There's really nothing I can do. Fuck you. <laughs> you say yes, eh? <laughs> ah. I had big dreams of you, me, and I think we were when I said that's all we did. But you played for me, but then cheered for them. But it's okay, as long as you know that I need you so. Mm. Well, of course, like, it's true. It's, that's how it is. Wherever we come from, we, where we come from, our beliefs, wherever we come from, is definitely going to govern our idea of freedom and our definition of freedom. You know, me coming from Africa, <laughs> our definition of freedom is totally different. And um, are we copying the white man's culture? I think it's... It's more like an exchange, you know. It's, 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 we should not. It's, 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 we're not copying. Human beings are like that. They get inspired from almost. They get inspired by almost anything. They see it. They like it. They do it. It's not about copying anybody's thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, but my definition of freedom. I think freedom is is discovering who you are, accepting who you are, loving it, and then being yourself and having an opinion and not being afraid to to speak it out loud and especially not getting punished for having an opinion that that for me is what freedom is of course your African mother will teach you how to express yourself <laughs> and everything that's me where you're coming from influencing you know the definition of your idea of freedom but for me for me that's generally what freedom is I'm 
I'm a Christian. I'm a believer. I believe in Jesus Christ that he came to earth, died for my sins, and was resurrected and will come back. Um, that that's pretty much what my my whole existence is based on. <laughs> that's what my whole existence is based on. to be considered I'm honored I'm glad I'm happy to know that people think I'm a confident person I do not know I do not know I was that rude though I'm like, I'm not rude I'm just um I don't know maybe too informal and too casual in my approach of life and people and everything you know because that's who I am that that's where I come from I come from that you know that, that's what I am. I don't know what to say. Um, I'm sorry if I ever offended anybody with my way of my manner of approach, or I don't know. But being rude, I thought I thought I thought I was sweet though. I thought I was a sweet person. <laughs> rude. <laughs> okay. You know, we're not a singer. This is pretty much all I can do, but I'll, I'll be acting or dancing or getting turned. <laughs> uh, I'll be an actor. <laughs> is a big deal <laughs> and I'm working on new music I'm working on new music I'm about to entertain and entertain and entertain my lovers special talent uh, I think it's going to surprise many people that I'm a good cook uh, yeah I think it's surprising people that I'm a good I'm sure Ibanga is probably someone being like yeah I can cook I'm a really good cook <laughs> I'm a really good cook um, God who sings the little boy in my video feeling love I I featured him and yeah the, the same little boy who dances in chill I'm, I'm sure everybody knows the little boy I'm talking of I'm referring to he's a singer he sings beautiful what do I want more than anything in the world I want a dope family I want a dope family I want I want the most beautiful family with the realest type of love, you know, and when it's time, and when it's time, I want to share my life with somebody <laughs> really special, all of it, not holding back nothing, and being absolutely sure that it's for real, you know, that's pretty much it, besides being successful, besides putting the wall at my mom's feet, you know, Besides all of that, that's what I want the most. Um, okay. So, 
Shout out to Kamer Bai for hitting me up so we discuss this. I hope that um, whatever I've said, whatever um, points I made helps anybody out there. And you know, it's a collective struggle and everything. Um, what I have to say to to any to anybody trying to, to to make it in the entertainment industry, trying to make it as an artist, is first of all, be true to yourself, discover who you are, and accept it and embrace it. Love yourself, like I've been saying over and over. Love yourself. For me, it was a very difficult journey to get to. To get, I'm not saying I'm I'm there yet, but I, but at least where I'm not where I was yesterday. You know, as a person inside out, I feel better. Love yourself, love yourself for who you are. Don't let where you come from, in any way, determine how you expect to be treated by everybody by everybody else. N n n don't matter where where you come from, poor, rich, just go out every day as a person. You know, and treat yourself like that, and treat everybody else around you. Like me, where I come from, pff, nobody will ever believe it. Literally, halfway deep into mud, slum, slime, and everything. And I'm not saying I'm the most successful artist in Cameroon. I'm just saying that I'm in a lot. I'm in a better place right now. You know. So, don't ever let nobody spit on you or treat you like less than a human being because of anything not because of your opinion not because of your gender not because of where you come from not because of what you have or what you don't have you know you have something special that's pretty much it <clears throat> wake up in the morning inspire yourself inspire yourself by yourself let your goals inspire you let everything you're trying to achieve inspire you let God inspire you you know and don't wait for anybody because they will fail you not because human beings are mean or, or, or anything. Human beings were just designed <laughs> like that. To let down one another, you know. Because that's how it is. Because we all have our own issues. So when you wake up in the morning, don't count on anybody. Count on God. Count on yourself. Trust your vision. Trust in wherever you're trying to get at. Um, well, that's it. <laughs> uh, I want to take out a minute and give a big fat shout out. To God, <laughs> who's been keeping it real with me, who's been being faithful and you know, being there for me, for real though, like, for real, I wouldn't have made it this far without him in my life. I want to give a big fat shout out to Basil, my mentor, everybody knows that, you know, already we know. To my Gasco, like my family, who's been there for me through everything, who's been holding it down, who's been keeping it real for me, telling me when I'm fucking up and when it's alright. Shout out to my family, shout out to, um, you know, the young stars coming up and making Cameroon look good. Shout out Koki, shout out Ngoma, shout out Olga, shout out Crispy, um, um, Rhythms, shout out <laughs> to Will Bit. Shout out to Creep Entertainment, shout out to us. No, we, we see everything you guys are doing. Array! <laughs> Array, I mean, everybody out there doing it right. So that was Gasha for you. <laughs>